Okay, we're off on our final data analysis exercise for our class. And this week we're going to cover the estimation of size class distributions. If you recall from last week, we read this uh, article by Hans Brugman that showed uh, some examples of size class distributions for different stand conditions. And we could see a lot of insights we can, uh, or the lots of insights that can be pulled from this, uh, understanding how tree sizes are distributed gives us insight into how resilient they are to different kinds of disturbances, as well as what is shaping the structure as we see it. Here's another example. This is one that I did where I was looking at the effects of a particular disturbance event. This one is a invasive pathogen. And what you can see here is the distribution of dead trees across size classes increases with tree size. And you can compare that to the uninvaded uh, stands, which tend to have uh, mortality is less common in the large trees. What this is showing is that that particular disturbance agent is more impactful to large trees, and that affects the size class distribution. All right, those are the practical reasons to do this. Let's talk about how we do it. All right, so we've got our standard data set for our course, our uh, stand data here. And um, what I've done is I've gone to the stand data tab and I've copied it into a new tab here. And I've done one thing. I've taken the stand data and then I've arranged it such that each, stands, uh, each stand is in a set of columns. So for example, here first I've got the Kern River Reserve um, and I've got the corresponding DBHs here. And then I just copied and pasted each stand adjacent to it. I did this for reasons of efficiency. This was my solution to this problem. Yours may vary, but this one works. Um, I know that, and I'll demonstrate how it goes. But uh, let me just show you a little bit else about it. Here is the next site, MDO. The needles are here, Poly Canyon, uh, Riparian here, so on and so forth until I get to the last stand, which is our Walker Pass Pinion Pine stand. And for each of these, I've got the site here in the column, and I've got the DBH. But I've got this other information here, the plot, the tree number, the species, what, and its health class. Uh, we're not going to use those this time, but I copy them in here like this because it could make uh, data uh, estimation analysis more efficient in the future. All right, so I've got these all lined up here. And the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, oh, and here's just a little bit of um, structure of the data. These are just, uh, these lists have different lengths. You know that because you've uh, calculated stand density for these stands in a previous exercise, and you know that some have more stems than others. Uh, I've also done this. I've created this little split screen so they can keep track of everything here. And what I've done is I've set up a series of size class distributions for which uh, I want to know the relative and absolute density of stems um, for each of these classes. So this first one is going to be stems that are less than five centimeters. The uh, 10 is between five and 10 centimeters. Next is 10 to 20, so on and so forth until I get to this last one, which is everything that's over 100 centimeters, so relatively large trees. All right, how do I do that? Well, I use this command in Excel. It's called count if. It's, um, a, nice, uh, it's a nice tool in Excel. What I've done here is I've selected a range of data. That's you see it in the blue box here. And then I give it some condition. So I say count the total number of stems that are less than five less than five centimeters. And that's pretty straightforward, and it gives me the result zero. There were no stems for this Kern River Preserve that were less than five centimeters. Now, next I want to know the um, distribution of stems between five and 10 centimeters. And my solution to, for this is simply to count all stems less than 10 centimeters, and then subtract the cumulative number of stems from the previous size classes. So I've subtracted the number of stems from the uh, below five centimeter size class. And then I just repeat this 
throughout this set of columns, but here I'm going to sum up everything that came before. So everything that's less than 20, but subtracting those stems that are uh, be less than five centimeters and between uh, 10 and five centimeters and so on and so forth, all the way up to the point where um, I am counting everything under 100 centimeters and then subtracting everything that is less than 90 centimeters. So, and what you get here is a value of zero because there's nothing in this particular stand that's between 90 and 100 centimeters. The last one is just slightly different, slightly simpler. I just tell, ask it to, to give me all of the stems that are less than 100 centimeters. And if I was to do, a better way to do this is to say 99.99999. Uh, you can do it 100 or equal to or so forth. But regardless, it's still zero steps. All right. Once I have this written in the correct way, and the essential, the important thing here is just to note that the range that I'm counting never changes. I can actually take this and copy it and then paste it right into this, uh, this next set of columns for the next uh, site. I've set this up for efficiency. So I just paste this in for, in for the Montana to Oro site, and then it counts up the uh, respective things, um, the respective number of stems in each of these size classes. And voila, I only had to write the, um, this annoying set of uh, Visual Basic commands once. And then I copy these for each of these, uh, each individual stands all the way across this. And then what I do after that is I'm going to copy all It's That's great. I've got all the size class distributions, but it's hard to deal with it when it's all spread out like that. So next, I copy everything down in here. I copy the values and then start to put everything together where I can start to use it. All right. So same data for each of these sites, same data. And then I just get it all arranged within this, the diameter class distributions. And I do one more thing uh, for reasons that I'll tell you about in just a little bit. I'd sum up, the, sum up the total number of stems for each of these sites. So the first one had 63, Montana de Oro had 142, so on and so forth. All right, with this data, I can start to analyze uh, size class di distributions. And we want to do this two ways. Let's do the absolute distribution of tree sizes, and let's do the relative proportion of tree sizes. So this is the first uh, figure that I'm going to make. It's a line plot using the xy uh, uh, scatter plot function in Excel. It creates this plot that's pretty straightforward and uh, relatively easy to interpret. Now I've got the hard part about it is I've got all the sites on here, and that's the one thing that makes this a little bit clunky. But it's still, um, we can make inferences from this. And first off, we see that Montana de Oro has this really, uh, ha is most prominent in terms of its distribution between these relatively small size classes and that ch large trees are very, are absent. We have um, some of the other uh, uh, sites are particularly prominent in terms of their abundance of larger trees. Um, and you can see those sites here. Um, and with this, we can start to get a, a, an idea of how trees are, how size classes are distributed within these stands, which stands have the narrowest range of size class distributions, and which have the largest, which is most likely this needle stand here, where trees are distributed across the entire range that we're, that we're examining, and there are relatively large trees at that site also. All right, so what's the second thing we're going to do? We're going to use these totals. And then let's convert this data into a relative proportion. That puts everything on the same scale, that it could be very helpful for examining size class distributions and comparing stands. And what I've done here is I've broken down the proportion of each size class for the total number of steps. All right, so how did I do that? Well, I took the uh, first set, the, the number of stems less than five centimeters for the current river preserve, and then I divided it by the total. And I did something important here that's also gonna save me some time. I put this little dollar sign on there that locked the row, locked the row here. I did not lock the column, I just locked the row. And then therefore I can just copy this, um, 
this equation down and it references the total number of stems and then creating this this uh, calculation is is really pretty trivial so let's just think about this here real quick got 63 total stems at the current river preserve but zero stems less than five centimeters that should give me a value of zero there are zero proportion of the stems are in that size class and that adds up whereas this um this one here we got about three we have three stems and that's um three of course is about five percent of the total and you can see that's um about 4.7 percent of the total and that seems right so on and so forth calculate all these and you can again see even more clearly, I think, which stands have um, uh, have the larger stems are more likely to be represented in them. And you've even got good uh, numbers, uh, easily more easily interpreted, interpreted data about the prevalence of large trees. So, for example, our old growth sequoia stand, almost 10% of the trees are above 100 centimeters. And I think that says a lot about it. You know, it's a stand with a really large um, tree diameter. All right, and so then we take this information and we plot it again, and you start to see different information come out of it. Notably, the Walker Pass stand has a relatively narrow distribution of trees, and that really come, jumps out. The problem with the current with the Walker Pass stand is that it doesn't have nearly as many trees. So just looking at the raw data here, it's harder to interpret. You see the same patterns here, but it's just it's just I find it easier to it's more obvious that that stand has a low distribution of tree sizes. It's a narrow range of distribution, distribution of tree sizes. Whereas a stand like the needles, which is this yellow line in the background, you can see that although small stems are the most prevalent, it's got stems all the way across the distribution here. And, we're, and then something like the uh, Montana de Oro has a very narrow range of dis size class distributions. All right, so there's a lot of Excel wrangling here. Um, but uh, this is a really nice practical skill that can help you out.